We might be watching the dollar crumble and burn in real time and lose its reserve currency status in the world. Now, is this going to happen overnight, tomorrow, next year? Probably not. It's not going to be something that happens extremely fast that the dollar just isn't used anymore. It's very cemented in everywhere. But we're seeing the signs start to show that things are kind of cracking. We got things like China and the UAE completing their first one settled LNG trade, which is a blow to the US dollar dominance. We got China and Brazil settling trade in their own currencies, ditching the US dollar. So obviously a lot of this is gonna have to do with China. They're the other kind of super power economy in the world. They're number two. And they might have a vested interest in seeing the dollar dominance go down, uh, but they've continued making these moves. They continue having more things. And one of the biggest things that have kind of started happening is this right here with uh, China and Saudi Arabia or Saudi Armco is strengthening their ties with two refinery deals. You can see here, Saudi Armco has agreed to acquire 10% of a Chinese oil refiner for $3.6 billion in the second in a pair of deals set to strengthen the relationship between the Middle Eastern state oil company and its biggest market. And they also have another investment days after with Saudi Armco announced a joint venture with two other Chinese companies to build a new 300,000 barrels per day refinery and petrochemicals complex in China's Northeast. So obviously strengthening relationships there too for China and Saudi Arabia, for China and Brazil and for China and basically the rest of the world trying to maybe push the wand down and make people start using the wand for trading. Uh, I don't know exactly if people would want to go down that route. I don't think it's going to be extremely popular for China to have the global reserve currency. I don't think that that is like an end goal for people, but maybe that could be happening with all of these different things that are going on. And even China and Russia, I've started ramping things up as we know Russia got sanctioned by the US when they started the war. And now they have a lot more of yuan on their trade here. See, Russia's turned to Chinese yuan to reduce resilience on the US dollar. If you look at this, you can see Invasion begins and the amount of yuan that they're trading in is uh, absolutely skyrocketed. So obviously sanctioned dollars, they're going to trade in something else. And if China is offering that, then that's what they're going to go do. Which also points a big hole in why this is all kind of happening too. Because the dollar in this whole dollarized system, the SWIFT system, got weaponized to begin with. And now it's a little scary to see one individual country controlling the global reserve currency. Because if you don't like that country, that country isn't like you, they can kick you out of the system. That makes big problems for you to have. So something that just it could be weaponizing this is not like making people happy to see that. And Elon Musk even weighs in here on a thread talking about the dollar losing its reserve status, saying serious issue, US policy has been too heavy handed, making countries want to ditch the dollar. Also saying combined with excess government spending, which forces other countries to absorb a significant part of our inflation. It's absolutely true. The biggest export of the US is US dollars. So that exports the inflation across the world. And if we didn't have the global reserve currency and we're printing at the rates that we do, there would be massive problems. We would definitely have hyperinflation. We saw what would happen with the big printing of like $12 trillion in two years. Tons of that was exported. We still have insane, ridiculous inflation. So imagine we couldn't export the inflation major problems, but that is also going to take a long time to play out. If the dollar falls from reserve status, it's going to happen over decades, not over, you know, the next year. It's not going to collapse insanely fast. You can see this is uh, this how much world foreign exchange reserves and the absolute vast majority is dollars. Almost 60% is in dollars, 20% in euros. So you know, all this stuff going on is chipping away at that, but it's going to take a long time to see it play out. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in the next one, two, three years, even 10 years plus 20, 30 years is when we're going to start seeing things shifting. And the big question is you look at the history of reserve currencies. You can see, obviously, we have massive histories here. 
80 years of this currency, 110, 80, 95, 105, and we're at 110 for the US dollar coming up in 2030 will be 110 years of that. And you can see that's about the average. The average length of a reserve currency is around 100 years. We're already past that. 1920 to 2020 be 100 years. We're on 103 right now. And we're already past kind of the average here. And Ray Dalio actually had a video on this talking about this switch up and kind of what's happening in reserve currencies and how history plays out. And you can see how something crazy could happen. Every time there's something, you know, insane that happens that changes the reserve currency. And I think that we got to look at this and think, what is next for the reserve currency? Because I don't think anybody, any superpower, any main first world country is going to want to give another first world country power over the reserve currency. We saw that played out and people aren't liking how it is. The U.S. had that for a long time and people obviously not liking it now. It's been weaponized. It's been shown that you can weaponize it. And it's just something I don't think a lot of people want to deal with. So you come up with what is the answer to that? What is the answer to a reserve currency that nobody owns or controls that you can be accessed freely and don't have to worry about it being weaponized against you because nobody controls it? And that's Bitcoin. I do think we see Bitcoin play out over the next few decades after this starts to whittle down. The US dollar starts to diminish even a little bit. You start to see Bitcoin start to pick up. Because there's going to be problems with China and the yuan, and there's already these problems there. How you get getting your yuan out, and it's not easy dealing with China. Russia, you have the same problems. Basically, all these countries outside of the U.S., you have major problems with your your money supply. And the U.S. just weaponized SWIFT against Russia. You can say it was right or it was wrong, but they shown that you can weaponize it. So now you got to wonder, what if you do something the U.S. doesn't like and they just kick you off the global stage? Big problems for other countries. And the answer is a decentralized currency that nobody controls, no one can kick you out of, and you don't have to worry about just bending over to some other power. And with the moves that we're seeing from China and other BRICS countries, we are seeing a lot of moves away from the dollar, and it seems to be starting. And usually, when you have this transition from world currency to next world currency, there's a major event and a devastating event that happens, and we might be going towards that. But I do think the future after that is that people will have to choose between another centralized, controlled currency that they have to hand over the powers to another country, or go down the decentralized route, go down Bitcoin, and see that nobody controls it, nobody has power over you, and you control your own money supply. I think that that is the path that people are going to go down, whether they want to or not. They're not really going to have a choice. It's not going to happen overnight, it's not going to happen quickly, and it's not going to be fun to see happen. So it's going to cause a lot of problems and it's going to cause it's going to happen over a long amount of time. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video.